Hello everyone, I am Nitin and in this video I will be discussing what is cryptographic hash function and its six important properties pre-image resistance, second pre-image resistance, collision resistance, avalanche effect, deterministic and computationally efficient. So let's get started. As we have already discussed a hash function in the previous video and cryptographic hash function is a special type of hash function so it maps an input of any length to a typically shorter fixed length value. We can also express this mapping process as an equation hx equals h where x is an input value and uppercase h is a cryptographic hash function and lowercase h is the output value or hash. However, a cryptographic hash function possesses certain security properties to provide certain security guarantees that a non-cryptographic hash function doesn't, therefore making it ideal for cryptography. There are certain properties that a cryptographic hash function needs to have in order to be considered secure and suitable for cryptography. Here we are going to cover these six important properties one by one. Let's start with the first property pre-image resistance which states that for the given hash value it is computationally infeasible to reconstruct the original message. In other words there is no inverse operation for a hash function like encryption and decryption and from the security viewpoint attackers cannot find the original message or pre-image of any known hash. If this is true for any hash function or algorithm then that hash function is a pre-image resistant. You can learn more about the hash pre-image in the previous video of hashing. For example here input is Nitin and I have generated its 16 byte hash value which is shown in hexadecimal using the MD5 hashing algorithm as this is the standard hash size of MD5 hash. I'm going to use MD5 examples to illustrate all the properties of cryptographic hash function because MD5 possesses several security properties but not all and it is useful to see both sides. For performing a pre-image resistance attack on MD5 from the given hash value here we need to find the original message Nitin if MD5 hash function does not let us find pre-image then it is a pre-image resistant otherwise it is not. To date it is difficult. Second pre-image resistance property states that it is computationally infeasible to find a second message or pre-image that produces the same hash value. It means that given a one message attackers cannot find a second message with the same hash value. If this is true for any hash function or algorithm then that hash function is a second pre-image resistant. Now considering the same example input is Nitin and its hash value is shown in hexadecimal using the MD5 hashing algorithm. For performing a second pre-image resistance attack on MD5 we need to find a second message which can generate the same hash value as shown here. If MD5 hash function does not let us find a second message then it is a second pre-image resistant otherwise it is not. To date it is difficult. Next property is collision resistance. It states that it is computationally infeasible to find two different messages that produce the same hash value. It means that attackers cannot find two different messages with the same hash value. If this is true for any hash function or algorithm then that hash function is a collision resistant. Now in the collision resistance example of MD5 I want to show you something different here. For performing a collision resistance attack on MD5 we need to find two different messages which can generate the same hash value using MD5. If the MD5 hash function does not let us find two messages then it is a collision resistant otherwise it is not. Let's check it. Here the two different messages are given which can generate the same hash value as shown in figure and this is just one example but you can find more pairs that can generate the same hash value using MD5. Therefore MD5 
is not a collision resistant and secure hash function and we should not use this as a cryptographic hash function. Now let's look at another important property of cryptographic hash function avalanche effect. It means a small change to a message should change the hash value significantly that the new hash value appears uncorrelated with the old hash value. In plain language, a change in just one bit of the original message should result in change to half the bits of its hash value that is 50% or more. What this means is that any change made to an input no matter how small will result in a significant change in the output hash to make it unpredictable. Let's look at an example of avalanche effect. If I just change a single letter of the input text here, for example, the first uppercase n to lowercase n and apply the same MD5 hash function or algorithm to calculate the hash of this slightly modified input, then the new hash value will be significantly different from the first hash value, although both inputs are almost similar. Okay, let's check how much these two hash values differ from each other. First, convert both hashes into bits. While comparing these two bit sequences, the number of bits flipped is 65 out of 128 and avalanche effect is around 50.78% which is the criteria we explained earlier. Let's look at another example. In this example, the second input is modified by only one digit at the last position. Don't confuse with bit it is digit and apply the same md5 hash function to calculate the hash of this slightly modified input then the new hash value will be significantly different from the first hash value although both inputs are almost similar okay let's check how much these two hashes differ from each other first convert both hashes into bit sequences while comparing these two bit sequences the number of bits flipped is 57 out of 128 and avalanche effect is around 44.53 percent which is slightly lower than the threshold we explained earlier. This is how we can evaluate the non-correlation of input and output and determine the quality of a hash function. Here MD5 provides that. Next property is deterministic. It means that the same message must always generate the same hash value using the same hash function. If I provide input x again and again to hash function, then it should always generate hash value h. Let's look at an example of MD5 again. If I provide input Nitin again and again to MD5 hash function, then it should always generate the same hash value as shown here. The final property is computationally efficient. The hash function or hashing algorithm should compute the hash value for any given message quickly. However, this property is a little more subjective and generally there is a trade-off between performance and security. So it requires a good balance between these two and you can determine the computational efficiency depending on the requirement of a specific application area. This concludes my presentation and thanks for watching my video.